What's up guys, welcome to The Chess Giant. This is creative director Ian Rowan back with another interview with chess expert Solomon Rudell. Today we've decided to laser focus in on 25 questions to help beginners to improve at chess. So if you're just setting out on your chess journey, this video is your guide. Enough from me, let's get to the content. I wanna lead in with a few questions on a personal note. Let's make these quick. Solomon. Yeah. At what age did you start taking chess seriously? About eight, eight years old. And what tools did you use to improve within your first year? I'm talking books, websites, teachers, anything you did. Yeah, so really I got a, a personal coach, a coach that uh, dealt with kids locally. And I also did chess magnet school, which is basically helping with chess tactics. If you could go back in time, would you change what you did? Or was it a smart approach to beginner chess? In other words, should a beginner focus on studying and improving their level of play or just go play a lot for fun? I think it's, I think it can be both. One side is to just have fun and the other side is to get better. But if you're not having fun while you're getting better, there's really no point. I mean, I, I do love chess, but at the end of the day, if you're getting better, but you're not enjoying the game, there's really no point. So for me, I think the number one priority is to have fun, especially if you're a kid, have fun, enjoy the game. And from there, if you are passionate about it, you'll be driven to get better. If someone listening to this is really eager to get going with chess right now, what are the first and fastest things they should look into as soon as this video is over? I would say working on tactics. Now tactics are basically combinations and ways to win material or checkmate the opponent's king. And chess is actually 99% tactics. Some even argue 100%. So if you get better at chess tactics, there's literally no way you cannot improve. So what's your number one strategy for improving at chess tactics? I would say look at puzzles, look at books, there's a lot of online resources as well. Really, you just want to learn the certain combinations, the ideas, the strategy, the principles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's so many resources out there, and it's really fun to improve. So you referenced a few different things a minute ago. What are the different categories of chess tactics that people need to be aware of? I would say that there's many different kinds of tactics. I'll just name a few. One of them, for example, is a fork where you use the knight to check, let's say, an opponent's king or queen. And, and in doing this, you actually win material. There's also mate ideas. And when, when I say mate, I mean checkmate. There's checkmate in one, two, three, etc. There's a lot of different tactics and there's a lot of ways to improve your position. So that's quite a few different kinds. Mm -hmm. Which one should a beginner start with? I would say checkmating. Checkmate is how you win a game of chess. And if you can learn to get good at checkmating the opponent's king, you're going to get better at chess. And really the rest of the game is going to come a lot easier. Okay, so let's take a look at gameplay itself. I know a chess game breaks down into several different parts. Can you lay out how those are distinguished from each other? Right, so there's really three parts to a game of chess. The opening, the middle game, and the end game. Now the opening is... Most of the time, 10 to 20 moves, usually in some kind of opening book, you'll actually be able to learn and memorize certain openings. For example, the Night or for the Banco Gambit, etc. But needless to say, in general, the opening is the beginning of the game. Then we enter the middle game, which is basically once a few pieces come off the board, we're no longer in memorization mode. And both sides really just have to think for themselves and play chess. And finally, we have the end game when there are six or less pieces on the board, and it all comes down to that. So you've got the opening, the middle game, and the end game. If I gave you 100 hours to study all three, how many hours would you devote to each? I would say 40, 40, 20. 20% 20 openings, 40% middle games, and 40% end games. So 20% of your time given to openings, that's relatively small. Are those going to become more important and time consuming later on? Yes. So I, I would say for beginners, the opening really isn't that important. Now it is important because you're starting off the game, but really you just have to learn the opening principles. We actually made a video on this, the four steps of the opening where you put a pawn in the center, 
You castle, you connect the rooks, and you finally point a rook towards the opponent's king or queen. That's really all you need to know as a beginner. As you improve and reach higher levels of chess, opening theory and preparation becomes very important, especially at the grandmaster level. Kasparov, Carlson, and players of that level have spent hundreds, if not thousands of hours memorizing thousands of lines up to the point where they can reach either move 40 to 50 in some variations. So you just answered in part our next question, which was about a player who doesn't memorize chess openings. What, if any, are the basic principles they should use to build an opening that's not going to cause problems later in their game? Right. Can you flesh more of those strategies out? Sure. Well, we have the four steps, and that's all about piece development. One of the mistakes that I see a lot of beginners make is pushing pawns upon pawns upon pawns, and really, pawns don't do much until the end game when they're more powerful and more of a threat. In the opening, you don't want to just throw pawns all over the place because that weakens the position of your king. What you want to do is move the pawns so that your back rank pieces can be more active. And on top of that, you really just want to put your pieces in positions where they have a lot of activity. You don't want to close your pieces back and play passively, but you want to put your pieces in a position where they really provide a threat to the opponent's king. Now, earlier, you devoted more time, 40%, to endgames. Pin down why these are so important. Well, endgames, I would say, are very important because that's how the game ends. You want to be prepared for once the pieces come off the board. And honestly, many endgame ideas are complex, and once you understand those, the rest of the game is going to come a lot easier. I'm amazed that an end game is how a game ends. I, yeah. I, never, I never would have figured that out. Yes. How many hours a day would you recommend be spent on chess for a beginner? It really depends on the beginner and how much they love the game. I would say for those that are very interested in getting better, I would probably say three hours a day. I think beyond that, it can be easy to waste time and get a little too invested in certain areas of the game. However, you could really spend as much time as you want. My thing is, is that the time I spend getting better, I want to be fully attentive. And what about speed chess? Is Blitz good for beginners, or do they need to focus on traditional gameplay for a while? So really, it depends on the type of player. There's two kinds of beginners, two types of players, really. One player that overthinks. I've played, and this I see this a lot with adults. They'll learn how to play chess, and they'll take up to 45 minutes, sometimes even an hour each move, trying to figure out which is the best. And on the flip side, you have kids who barely think at all. I mean, sometimes they move before you even moved your piece. So... There's really two types of players, the player that overthinks and underthinks. If you're a player that overthinks, I think Blitz can be very good. It forces you to move. It forces you to play with some intuition. However, if you're a player that doesn't think that long, I would say go for more traditional games and push yourself to really become one with the position and really try to understand all the lines, variations, and ideas. Do you believe that a chess coach is necessary for improvement, or just important, or not important? I would say that a chess coach is very beneficial. I mean, having a good chess coach really will help you improve in your game. However, I wouldn't say it's necessary. There's so many programs, especially nowadays, so many programs, books, YouTube channels, etc. that can really help one in one's studies. And For example, Caden Troff, one of the United States' best players of all time, he never had a coach. He simply read books, watched Grandmaster games, and learned how to think the game of chess for himself. Can you tell me more specifically how coaching helps improve gameplay? So really with coaching, it shows, if you have a good coach, the coach will show you where you're making mistakes. For a beginner, you may think, And this is what I see a lot of times with beginners. They'll play out to move 50, and there's an even position at move 50, and then the beginner makes a mistake, and they blunder a queen, etc. And then the beginner walks away from the game thinking, well, I played 
pretty good, if not perfectly, the first 50 moves. And then I made a mistake. If I didn't make that mistake, I would have been fine. But the truth is, at any level, especially if you're a beginner, you have plenty of errors before move 50. So a coach can really help you understand your weaknesses, your strengths, and how to improve on your weaknesses, as well as improving the strengths that you already have. What are the signs of a good chess coach? And flip side, what are the red flags of a coach you should avoid? Right. So I'll start first with a coach you should avoid. There's some coaches that they really don't have a system. They don't have any system or or goal or means on how to help the player improve. A lot of coaches, they'll just sit you down at the table and play blitz for half of the session. Let's just say the session's an hour. They'll play blitz for 30 minutes and After that, they'll do some tactics with you from a book that you could do on your own. And then they'll ask for your money and then walk away. That's not a very good coach. A coach is someone you're paying to teach you certain ideas and to help point out the strategy and mistakes that you often make. A coach will also help you with opening preparation and really be able to see, okay, is this player aggressive? Is this player positional? And from there can help you decide an opening repertoire. So the biggest thing there is uh, someone engaging personally with you and figuring out right. your mistakes in a way that a book can't figure right. out. Right. Yeah. Let's say that some people listening can't afford a chess coach. What are the best alternatives for reviewing your games? I would say there's really two options. So let's just say you're playing tournaments. And most of the time, if you're reviewing a game, it will be from a tournament. The first option, let's just say you lose. Let's say you're rated around 1,200 and you lose to a 2200 player, let's say you lose, it's always a good idea, even though you lost, to ask your opponent, hey, is it cool if we go over the game? And oftentimes your opponent, especially if he or she is higher rated, would love to go over the game with you and point out a couple of the mistakes you made, as well as the things you did well. So that's one option after you're done with the game with the person you just played against. If they play at a higher level, really try to learn from them and what they do best. And on top of that, if you're by yourself, I think computer programs are good. Obviously, computer programs can literally just say, okay, this move wasn't good, and this move was better. But from there, you can try to figure out, okay, the computer told me to play rook c1 instead of bishop e2. Why is this, and how can I apply this to my games? What books would you recommend for chess beginners? So for kids, I would definitely recommend Chess Strategy for Kids by Jeff Coakley. That is a very good book that really shows the development from a very beginner up to probably around 1400 level. Lev Albert's Comprehensive Chess Course is also really good. And really all of Lev Albert's books are good. He talks about so many different areas of the games, opening, middle game, end game, pawn structure, attacking chess, positional chess, etc. We live in an ever increasingly digital world. Is chess knowledge still primarily relegated to books or are there some computer resources you would also recommend to beginners? Yeah, so for computer resources, I think that chess.com offers a lot of good things, chess tempo, tactics trainer, books are good. Books are good because you can sit down, set up a board, and learn from what the book is saying, really analyzing the position it gives you. However, they've developed programs, for example, Tactics Trainer, that literally gives you, say, 100 problems. You solve those problems, and then it tells you, hey, you're really good at checkmating, but you're struggling with endgames, especially king endgames, etc. So they've made programs that can really point out okay, at least for your tactics, this is where you're doing well and this is where you're not. Let's see if we can improve in this one area. What are the biggest mistakes you see chess beginners make in terms of their study? The number one mistake I see is beginners focusing way too much on openings. And I've already touched on that a little bit, but really for a beginner, I see it all the time. The beginner doesn't really know how to play good chess overall, but they have so many lines memorized. So at move 20, they could be playing a 2100 player and look great. However, once they don't know their memorized lines, 
they end up making huge tactical mistakes, sometimes even blunders, giving up pieces. You want to have a well-balanced studying schedule. Notice how I didn't say 95-5 or 80-10-10. I said 40-40-20, and that's what chess is. There's so many different facets of the games, and you want to be well-rounded. Tell me, is studying Grandmaster games a good battle plan? And which top chess players might be the best to study? I think studying Grandmaster games is a great idea. I mean, they're the, they're the best to do it, right? I mean, it's a lot better to study Kobe Bryant, for example, than, than me playing basketball. So you want to study the best to do it. And when studying the game, I think it really matters. I think it really depends on your style of play. So if you're aggressive, you may like reviewing games from Mikhail Tall and Gary Kasparov, looking at their attacking games, going, okay, how did they formulate this attack? How did they go after the opponent's king successfully? And if you're a positional player, if you like more relaxed positions, go over a player like Anatoly Karpov. See how they slowly improve the positioning of their pieces and look at how they slowly improve their space, etc. Okay, so you're referencing playing style here. Yeah. Can you lay out the different styles briefly, as well as a strategy for a beginner to figure out which one they should pursue? Right, so I would say overall, and there are subsets of these, but I would say overall there's three styles. The first one is universal. And a great example of this is Magnus Carlsen. Really with universal style, what you're trying to do is simply play the best move in front of you. That could be attacking chess, that could be positional. Really you're looking at each position by a move by move basis without really committing to one style of play. The second is positional. And with positional, for example, Anatoly Karpov, if you're a positional player, you prefer positions that are quiet, reserved, closed, not a lot going on, you're simply moving the pieces around, trying to maneuver, trying to find that next strategic weakness in the opponent's position. And finally, and this is my style, attacking chess, where you throw pieces everywhere, ruthlessly go after the opponent's king, and go for the win. What is the most straightforward way, in your experience, to access and study Grandmaster games? I would say that there are certain databases that are good. For example, chessgames.com. They have pretty much every game imaginable on there. And on top of that, I personally really like going over books by the player himself or herself. For example, if you're going to go over Gary Kasparov's games, look at the books that Gary Kasparov has made. Don't just watch the game, but actually look at what he was thinking. Read about what he was thinking and how he came up with the decisions he had. The second option, besides going over a game on chessgames.com or with commentary, is literally not seeing the next move. What you want to do here is not look at the next move. You could use a piece of paper or something to block it out. But you're going to, each move, think for yourself, okay, what would I do here? How would I attack the opponent's king? And once you came up with a decision, see if the Grandmaster played the move that you played. And lastly, do you have any more advice for people trying to improve at chess that we haven't touched on so far? I would say simply playing better players. Just like anything in life, you're gonna get better if you're doing it around people with a level of excellence. And with chess, I think for beginners, it's really easy to to want to play players that you can beat, right? I mean, this goes for any of us. But really what you want to do, if you're trying to get better, is play players that you know you're going to lose against, or at least that you have a very good chance of losing against. And by doing this, you stretch yourself, and you really learn what they do best. And on top of that, they can give you pointers on what you need to improve on. All right, that wraps up today's episode of The Chess Giant. You've learned how to learn how to play chess. Now check the description for more resources that are going to improve your gameplay sure. and teach you crucial fundamentals. Like and subscribe to keep learning. Mm -hmm. And as always, thank you for watching.
Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to watch another one, you can click or tap up here. And I've got a lot more high quality chess content on the way. So if you'd like to subscribe, you can click or tap down here. I really appreciate your support.